Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome to our channel. Take a look around, There's plenty of content for you to binge. We're coming up on two years. Next month, it'll be two years that I've had the channel going. We start looking at the wall of my living room, decorated like this just because old movies are important for the past 32 years. So today's title I'm so excited to bring to you guys. This is the caliber movie that had kind of just been harder to find until it wasn't hard to find. I'll t <laughs> One day we had an upload happening like it was released and I was I always watch them as close to real time when I release them as I could now there were some glitches going on and so I was like oh I know this spot has access to it and I have known about this spot for years um, there's a lovely subscriber of ours that has something of his own going on on this platform and I just for the life of me could not ever figure out how to share the information and so finally just the universe one day this movie was happening it was a little bit of a glitch I needed to find someplace else and that day I came across how to share the information you guys will know what I'm talking about because let me explain what I'm talking about. The only movies that I upload as watch-alongs here on this channel is because I found the movies, right? So that means if I can find it, you guys can find it. And the place where I share that information with you is over on my sister Pinterest page. I create a board for every movie that we watch, fill it with pictures from that film. And you can see I love film photography decorated my house with it. Um, first, second thing that you're going to see in that board is giving you the information you need to push play on a copy of the movie with me. So the watch along experience of watching the whole movie from start to finish is absolutely doable on my channel because we all have access to the films. Um, so that being the case that now there's just no holds barred. Um, I knew I was to really like let's get into it now I knew I was starting with this movie because we have enough really great content on this channel already but this one and we have discussed it so many times Greer Garson's catalog is the most protected I think I always say this person that person but wouldn't you say hers is the most protected it's very odd though I have to admit um, I have a couple of different YouTube channels. You guys know that. So on this YouTube channel, whenever I'm just, you know, on YouTube, on this channel, looking around, I will see on my homepage, so many channels lately here on YouTube have gotten away with putting up the full movies of so many major movies that you guys know my story too. I've in the past had channels where I was just uploading movies and a lot of the time it was really limited to like mostly kind of public domain type of stuff. Every once in a while you might be able to sneak in with a couple of hours on a bigger title but then it gets recognized as copyrighted material that's not supposed to be able to be up on YouTube for free and it gets taken down. Um, but even at that, with all of these major movies lately that I've been seeing, people are just like, when did y'all just get to start posting the damn movies up on YouTube for free? I've never seen anything of Rick Carson's major, you know, and I've just never seen anything of hers. So the story to this movie is that, yeah, let me, housekeeping stuff, watch me in the movie on one screen. So that's also what we do, okay? On this channel, we watch the movie together from start to finish. I don't put the copyrighted material on the screen. I don't want to get a strike. 
so you have access to push and play on the movie with me but then set it up so that you're watching me in the movie at the same time on one screen one way you can do that is two tabs me and one tab the movie and another they're gonna lock side by side you can pull the movie to take up more of your screen you're setting that up on your computer or a tablet take an HDMI cable from that device plug it into your bigger screen TV or cast it however you guys can just get it from one to the other I'm working with a 15 foot 4k HDMI cable from my laptop to my bigger screen TV and that's because I have spotty internet and I don't like things to drop in the middle of my little setup if you can do everything wirelessly you have stronger internet than I do it's called casting or let's go through the steps on this video of me there should be a button that says play on TV push that then picture in picture that shrinks me floats me move me therefore into a corner of the movie launch the movie full screen let the movie take up the biggest part of your screen and then I'm just in a corner wherever you navigate me on top of the movie. There's a runtime timer in the corner, hour, minute, second. That's my playback of watching the movie. Make sure yours is at the same spot and we're in perfect sync. That's what we do. That's how we do what we do on this channel. All right, now let's get into the goods on this movie. Um, I'm a long time into watching old movies. First time I ever come across this. I know it was on Turner Classic. I didn't see this back in the AMC days. Like I, I was 20 plus years into watching old movies. And um, yeah, there was just a lot of hype around it, right? Like, first of all, it's Greer Garson, so that's a big deal. First of all, too, it's in this phase of time where she is creating a record that she only has tied with Betty Davis, meaning no other bitches are in the same level category as them. Nobody has touched their record since them. They were both getting nominated for Best Actress five years in a row. Betty Davis had to have started a year or two before Greer Garson, because we don't even get Greer Garson on the scene until Hello Mr. Chips. You guys are loving that here on the channel. It's got great views. Um, but yeah, so, and I feel like she may have been nominated for a Best Actress in Hello, Mr. Chips, Goodbye, Mr. Chips, is <laughs> in Hello, Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Um, and so from there, every year for five years, she's getting nominated for Best Actress. I didn't look this stat up. How many times did she win? But for sure, she wins here, 1942. So this thing, as I was doing my research for it right now, I didn't know how well received this thing was at the time. First time I'm watching it on Turner Classic, it's hyped up, but that's because it was hyped at the time. It won Best Picture. I had no effing idea about that. Won Best Director, and it's William Wyler. And that, right now, when I read that, I've, I have never put William Wyler as the director. By the time now of doing this channel, we have a William Wyler playlist. He's the GOAT. I would say William Wyler is the GOAT of classic film director, period. And it's because he is so well-rounded. He can do any type of genre of film. But like the thing about him that stands out for me is Wuthering Heights. I just love that movie. And so that right there just gives you the feel of a William Wyler movie, the type of things that he's doing. He did, he does Jezebel. I, that is one of my favorite movies of all that. Y'all, I lost my mind in doing that um, watch along. I did not monitor the F-bomb usage in that. But yeah, I mean, he just gets you going. But then he also directed The Big Country, a, a Western. So you know what I'm saying? Like he can just go all over the place with his prowess of film directing. And so, and he also did Mrs. Miniver. I would never, ever have guessed that William Wyler was the director of this movie. And I think that's always when I just, he's a goat. It's like, you come, it's like William Wyler directed this movie. It's, yeah. So he won Best Director. It won six. Greer, a picture director, Greer Garson. It makes history as the first film to get five acting nominations. So what are those, right? That's Best Actor, Actress, Supporting Actor, Actress. What is the other? It, it said five acting um, nominations that it got. <laughs> What's the other type of acting role? But, uh, so maybe that was not quite correct. Uh, I know that it said five. Hold on, let me look that up. Yes, it was half of one, half of the other. There are four categories but this thing got five nominations for five actors. So for Best Supporting Actress, Teresa Wright wins. I never knew that either. 
but she was nominated up against Dame Mae Whitty for that same Oscar, same movie. Um, little Mr. I don't know his name in the movie. I haven't seen this thing since I've done this channel, people, so I haven't seen this movie in two years because by job, I was determined to watch it with you guys at some point. It was gonna go on the member site if it could have only gone over there. Um, who, Henry Travers, I now know his name. He's um, in Jezebel, not Jezebel, Dark Victory. Um, he's in this, he's the little man that makes the rose after Mrs. Miniver. Um, what else is he? He's in everything, right? Like he's, he's in Dodge City. We have him on the channel in that. Um, you will do, he's in Random Harvest. He's just the staple character actor. He's in, um, it's a wonderful life, huh? He's the angel and it's a wonderful life. The angel that gets his wings. That guy, he got nominated for best supporting actor. And then of course, Walter Pigeon got nominated for best actor, the supporting actor, best actor. Um, so here's the tea though okay because turner classic threw this in and it just it makes you perk up and you're going to be paying attention to details as you're watching this because this is kind of scandalous um i looked up greer arson was born in 1904 so by 42 what she's 38 i mean which is fine but she's a grown-ass woman right like she's a grown-ass woman and then i just also I was looking up the story of Mrs. Miniver, but then I clicked on the link to take me to Greer Carson because I wanted this detail. She was married in 1933, okay, to this dude who becomes some type of like a judge or whatever. So like he was into big time things, this, with his intellect, right? So they go on a honeymoon, I feel like they said in India or whatever, because like that's where he was working. And I feel like, you know, a two, I feel like they said after a two week honeymoon or maybe at most a month long honeymoon, he decided that he was going, I feel like they said go back to India. So they did, they took their honeymoon wherever they took their honeymoon. But he was gonna go back to his post over in India. And she decided to go back to England and just stay with her family. And so, for their marriage like after their honeymoon they were basically not together and i guess as if like broken up because they said her husband as he was in india was just always all forlorn and would watch her movies like two or three times at the movie theater in india whenever they would make their way over there um because they were married in name only and so they said that finally in 1943, they got it dissolved. They finally divorced, made it official. But they, he was in India, she was in England. That's how they were married. In this movie, she's a mother to a lot of kids. Not a lot, but she got some kids. She got grown ass kids, she got baby kids. And she's mother to this grown ass young man out of the house, right? He's off in college. In real life, he's 12 years younger than her. They end up getting married, okay? So watch that chemistry in the movie. There's a scene where he's going off into the military and he's saying goodbye to everybody in his family, right? He's with Teresa Wright in this movie. They're age pair, right? Correctly, right? Just as far as the same age, correctly. That's all I mean. And he's kissing everybody goodbye. And so she, Greer Garson is his mother in this movie. He kisses her straight smack on the lips. And it's like, oh, cause that's your future husband in real life. There's a weird, there's an, it feels inappropriate. The kiss, watch it, you'll see. They get married, I don't, they get married in 1943. So, you know. She gets her divorce and then they get married. Um, so they were saying like this marriage though at the time, right? Like back in this day, I mean, she was a cougar. Go get it, Miss Greer Garson. Um, but, you know, being a cougar, I guess back in 1943 wasn't the same stature as it is today. <laughs> and so, <laughs> right? Today, people would just be giving her applause. Back then, they said it was just totally under scrutiny, and so here comes MGM always getting involved in shit, right? 
they were putting out press releases letting everybody know that there was only a three year age difference between them. Now why the F would they say that? I mean, they were really 12 years apart, but they lied and said they were only three years difference, age difference. And so they ended up divorcing in, in 1947. So, and they were saying that it was a, a troubled marriage. Like they were just always making up, breaking up. Um, and so just, they were saying like, after a series of reconciliations, they finally divorced in 1947. Just another little tidbit about Greer, you know, so then she gets married one last time. And she, I feel like she took a couple years, maybe. I feel like she got married in 1949. So a couple years after she divorces this dude, who evidently like turned into some kind of Wall Street guy after divorcing her. Um, she married a millionaire. And she stayed married to him until he passed away in 1987. Greer Garson passed away in 1996. She lived a really long time. Um, but yeah, this guy that she last married was a millionaire. She stayed married to him for the rest of his life. Um, so they were thoroughbred horse breeders and kind of retired to a ranch in New Mexico. I just found that quite interesting. So anyway, um, best cinematography this thing wins. Uh, let's see, six Oscars. Picture director, actress, supporting actress, cinematography, edit the screenplay screenplay gets adapted it starts getting written in 1940 it keeps getting adapted as america is getting more involved in war, world war ii um so that the scene i feel like this is the scene of the movie is probably what wins her the oscar right is her encounter with a german and it keeps kind of just getting rewritten to get a little bit and a little bit more intense until finally um they said the movie was kind of already done and shot, filmed, wrapped. We get into World War II officially, right? December of 41. And in February of 42, they reshot the scene with the German, culminating it to she slaps his face. They just kept trying to make the scene more and more intense, just really pulling on people's, you know, patriarch, what is it, patriotism? Patriarchy, patriotism. Um, and so it is interesting because this is truly a story about England and their involvement and their experience of their country at war. But I guess, you know, like you, ju it doesn't matter. You just really relate to World War II just it was it impacted everybody kind of once everybody was into it right so kind of and we were the allies so it, it really wasn't a separation of experience i i bet you being here on the planet at that point in time it was like that right so but they were saying like specifically for england i mean like it's a really highly regarded like a lot of pride picture uh, because they it shows their fortitude it shows how they are just gonna get through this right i love the scene when they are having to be in their little bunker in their backyard right so um yeah this just is the epitome greer garson movie we have two of her movies we have uh random harvest that is the same year people oh my goodness yes I'm telling you, throughout Random Harvest, in, in all actual... Ooh, this is going to be a challenge for me, because like I said, I haven't seen this movie since I've been doing the channel. I have a podcast spoiler alert on Random Harvest in two parts, because I take you very in-depth walking through that. Well, I basically become an actor, and I play all roles in the movies as I tell you the stories of what's going on in those movies. That was how I started this channel, because... Random Harvest was a movie that I absolutely would have wanted to watch with you, but I knew my ass would not get away with trying to upload it here onto YouTube. And I noticed that, like I said, no matter how much other stuff people are getting away with, they ain't putting no Greer Garson stuff up. So I started with a spoiler alert of that. Then I figured out how to do this thing, and we have watched it as well. And I know that throughout that whole movie, just really, really having studied that thing so hard, it's the subtlety of her facial expressions and just she is this her husband's secretary he's got amnesia she's been working as his secretary for two years she hasn't told him that she's his wife I've, 
She gave herself a run for her own money. I feel like she was nominated for that, too. So that... Whoa! Let me look that up. I need to look up if she was nominated for Random Harvest, Mrs. Miniver, and Beats Herself. Because that's a record I know that she has going along with five years in a row. I, I know... The only other person in history, five years in a row, best actress, is Betty Davis. Greer Garson is the... Oh, let me look and see if she was nominated for Random Harvest. If so, she's the only person nominated five years in a row and twice in one year, too. Let me look that up. Well, no, she wasn't officially nominated. Um, Coleman was, and the supporting actress in that movie was. But, you know, she should have been. If that was possible to do, she should have been. And she should have act. I'm going to see if I'm going to hold it that I think she should have won for Random Harvest. What do you guys think? Um, but that's what we're talking about when we talk about Greer Garson. Her titles are crucial classics. Let's go and get ready to push play on this one. Let me get it queued up and I'll hit you back playing in three, two, one, click. Let's get started. All right. And also just before we push play at the very end, it'll be the way we close out the movie. They were saying though, that this sermon scene that happens at the very end, like even for America, Roosevelt ordered it to be used in a lot of propaganda stuff um, like exactly and they typed it up they had it on leaflets they said that thing was getting passed around the world um, to like the ally countries so it's a major crucial classic a runtime of like two hours and 12 minutes I feel like I just saw that it said you have seen that on the screen earlier all right playing in three two one and I was that quick. It's MGM. That's right, though, because Greer Garson was signed to MGM. She just kind of did. Um, I feel like maybe it was a blend of stuff where she was filming in England. Mr. Chips, that was the situation. And I think this is probably true for her, too. People, what is... They were saying, like, another just... Um, epic part of this movie is the Dunkirk scene which we'll we'll know what it is when it happens but I don't know what that is I mean uh, we'll see I think we actually will know what it is um, but They don't really go into a lot of detail. Calic does the gowns about, oh, and there's somebody for the men's wardrobe too. Uh, they don't go into detail about what it was about. We just see it very big time happening and then it's just over. This story of an average English middle class family. Okay. Oh, we're all the way back in 39. Careless people who worked and played, reared their children, tended their gardens in that happy, easygoing England that was so soon to be fighting desperately for her way of life and for life itself. Wow. Well, you know, I'm like, it started that far back. Well, yes, because World War II was going on for a while before our country got involved. Huh? We do get to see, in a way, she's kind of dizzy, Mrs. Miniver. Look at her, look at her. What she's all worried about. Something. She's just got to have it, right? Oh, she needs them to stop the train. Flippant, right? Like, these are little, teeny, tiny, like, first world problems, right? All right. Now, Random Harvest. In England, too. Um, Oh. 
they put it aside because they knew she's this dizzy. Or I just, people, I'm not about material things. And this hat is absolutely ridiculous to this. She's got to have it. She's all worn out. And cigars. <laughs> right? He's not the man at the end. <laughs> Who is that looking all hard in the window? It wasn't her. Huh? Sniff. Oh. Memory. <laughs> She's the better. She read her for Phil. Because she told her her husband did something that he doesn't do. She's like, bitch, I knew it was something like that. <laughs> oh, they have to pay when they get off. She's a little creeped out on her. Even though she just said that, she's still a little creeped out. Because why is she needing to come alone with this man somewhere? He's in love with her, huh? I'm just now seeing this. Oh, he's needing her to look at the rose. It's really pretty, and you know if that's red? Roses are so hard to grow. People, I've grown roses on my patio. hard as hell. Okay, well, let's push your cues. Fertilizer.
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stalking you. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Everything in this movie is going to make you want to cry. I feel like I'm going to cry. Look at him. Okay, so he just gets to stalk her because he goes to work every day. Does he know where she lives right here? We don't need to worry. He's not more creepy than we've already just been creeped out. <laughs> Her husband was perched down behind his car. They have a nice house. In well, did he buy this car already or it's still in process? Negotiation. Cars it seemed like they were so often convertibles back in this day. Dude's playing it real cool then. Is it just gonna be like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, because the price is what it is. Ooh. Oh, hey, budget. Is he acting like that? Wow, well, he just made a sale. He's acting like he couldn't care less. Said, so maybe you need to think it over. He said, we have cheaper cars. People are getting red for filth to their face, huh? This poor little girl's piano teacher. This is... Oh, look, it's Marnie from Out of the Past. It gives us such an okay. Wait, um, why do you need to... Is everybody just inappropriately catching <laughs> Catching feelings that they shouldn't be having. I mean, look at the age range of these kids. What is, is he three? He can speak. Is she gonna say? Look at her. I love the way she has her hair up. <laughs> what a face. Working 
Oh, so she's just going to see her man. Just because. Oh, they both don't want to tell each other about their days. <laughs> Am I on here? But they should get a new one. <laughs> Tired. Oh, is it already out there? <laughs> I was going to say, is she driving? But no, that's England to... Was Walter Pigeon English? I'm just now thinking about that. Oh, that's her cue. Because this hat, like, what is she supposed to do with it? Like, she doesn't even really know how to wear it, right? Oh, she's supposed to hold it. <laughs> What's it for? What on earth is she ever gonna wear it with? <laughs> Look, you know that the dynamic between them is, oh, I have a nice time. And a new hat. Now what? Oh, it's the rose. You left a light on. They have a 
lot of light in this room, huh? It's a weird... I don't like this room. It feels like too much stuff is going on in here. It's like their beds, they gotta... I don't want all that going on in my room. <laughs> I just want to dedicate... I don't want a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want it to feel like my outside rooms. Oh, alright, look, there he is. Okay, so that right there was fine. You know what? It makes me think. They probably didn't know each other before making this movie. So watch how it will progress. She got a little hopping along. He's four at most, you know, he's four. Oh, look at her. Why is the dad? <laughs> oh, he hasn't stopped. <laughs> so they were more free back then or less? The dad, uh, he does not want to participate. Are they wondering why they're sending him to college? He hasn't stopped talking to us since. <laughs> She's never been here before. She's introducing herself. But he knew her. Oh, she's not gonna sit. Okay, yeah, so sit down, chick. No. They don't ever enter. Wow. That's messed up. Is Teresa right? English. Technically, no, right? 
the, they're in a village. He's all rude. Oh, don't apologize. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and what do you do? Fall. This chick, is she going to say she shouldn't have asked? <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, so then you shouldn't have said it. Oh, uh, it's just tonight. They're keeping it moving along. Oh. Uh, so even his peers don't think he should. Oh, or she can go shopping somewhere else. What are they ringing this bell for? That's interesting. I said like they're moving it along, but it is a long movie. We don't usually watch movies over two hours. Where she put him in his place, huh? punked him out. She made him feel like a punk. She doesn't ever want to sit down. She wants everybody else to sit down. Is she going to ask about Vin? Oh, that's kind of, um, does she not say? Yeah, that is kind of intriguing. He's all, you know, it's like, it's intense, huh? It's intense. It's to see her alone. They fought, and now he needs to see her alone. Oh, look at him, he's staring at Are they going to kiss right here? Oh, okay, but... 
okay. Yeah, I mean, he stormed. Oh. All right, yeah. Yes, you were. Okay, all right. She better get back. Is he coming in there? Okay. Okay, then go in there with her. Why? With what's going on in the world right now? Okay. <laughs> he makes her, she makes him think harder. He's really tall compared to her. Okay, so like I said, evidently after this guy divorces Greer Garson, he becomes some type of a Wall Street finance guy. Do we see him in any other movies is my question. Has he been in anything before this and do we see him in anything else? It's interesting. Oh, and his, and she was fat. His. Ah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Everybody's been stalking everybody. From a distance, huh? Who is he giving us? He's giving a little bit of, um, Junior. Fairbanks Junior, huh? So, he got all of her dances for the rest of the night. I want to say, oh, God, he's going to write to her, and she doesn't write him back one time, huh? And they just said she's going to be gone for months. She's looking at her son man hard hut. <laughs> That's their national anthem. Like, it was, why were they saying it was royalty coming in? That happens in what movie? Um, White Cliffs of Dover. They go to a little party and the king and queen come in. Oh, today's the day of the contest. What does... What? What did he say? War is coming? Oh, do they do that a lot over in England, huh? There's, okay, so I tried, I, people, I really did roses. I tried the little teeny tiny ones. Are those English, the little tea cup roses or whatever? <coughs> <laughs> Gregor. 
first, then she goes to church hard, huh? <laughs> I didn't see anybody else that devout about it. What is Ter Teresa Ray doing? Yeah, they, she's just bowing down. The old lady bows down. She's not better than her betters about that. This is just the next day or something. She's back. Um, we'll see. I feel like it's gonna play out with that. He wrote her all the time. Like, she said that he could. And yeah, she didn't write him back because if she would have, she would have told him she was coming back. What, he's coming to announce something. They are at war now. I thought this man, the vicar on the train with her, I didn't think he stood in the church and spoke. Of course he would, like, that's what a vicar does. But I don't remember him being the one speaking at the end of the movie. It's John Barrymore, for real, at the very end. Just I don't know where it'll be him. Will it? He said they're at war. I'm just remembering the first time that I, since I've been alive, when it's like our country is at war, um, you just feel a way, huh? You feel worried. And the war that I was, you know, we were watching the nightly news, and I feel like whoever, was it Brokaw? Was the guy that we watched? Is that the old lady? No, huh? It's just somebody else. Um, it just was scary, right? And it was nef It wasn't on our soil, so it's going to be a much different experience for these people. It's not going to be something that they're not going to be affected. Are we? Okay, yeah. Toby. His name is Toby. He goes over to her house. Huh? I like that. Because huh? she, again, she told him without telling him that he was a punk. She was challenging his manhood. Really. Jeez. 
they said in this movie, they never say one thing against the country that everybody is at war with. But it's clear anyway. But, just notice that. They never say anything disparaging. Oh, he's laughing at it. He's like the little boy in National Velvet. Velvet's teeth go. His what? Charlie, good luck, Horace. <laughs> Are they married? No, I don't see a ring on his finger. Oh, <laughs> She knows how to take a drop of Yeah, look at that. See, they give her more face time in the other movie. Obviously, it's become real close to home for her, right? That's true. That's true. He's gonna go be the man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, no. It's blackout time. He's, yeah. Oh, her husband noticed what he said, too? Boy, people be um, guarding the house, huh? These butlers and maids. Now, Voyager, Betty Davis gets a call. The maid answers the phone. Who is it, please? Oh, okay. And you never wrote back. What was his answer? Oh, 
Was he telling her he's in love with her? I love this dress she's wearing. Does she feel him like that? Okay. Mean it if you say it. Uh, yeah, that's what he meant by seeing her every day. She knows about this Rosa. Oh, they did it. Tramp. She ain't gonna do the blackout. Will she do the blackout? Oh, oh, they wouldn't dare, bitch. <laughs> well, you better get ready because they are daring. And it's gonna go down uh, in England in World War II. Yeah. So he's gonna do it. Okay, right. he's mounting up. Oh. <laughs> Everything's under control, huh? I'll expect you when I see you. What, what, what? Oh, that's where they all are. Oh, jeez. That little bit of light. Uh-oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Damn. Okay. And for forty shillings. How much? My grandpa used to eat sardines. Ew! I don't eat fish, people, and them sardines. Mm -mm. He's excited. Mmm, 
Okay. Moving it along. Okay. People were going to understand that whatever Dunkirk is, right, is obviously civilians went. I remember, I have, I've tried to edify myself on, you know, watching National Geographic stuff. Oh, okay, dude, damn. <laughs> yeah, turn it off. It was some big battle with water. A German plane crashed, and there's a lot of cover. No, okay, was it the northern part of somebody's country on really cold ocean water and it was just a major battle in the water, right? Oh, look at him. doesn't like that. Yeah, it's so sad. Mm. that a solid B? I know that it had to do with land too, right? But it obviously we're gonna it has to do with boats and native civilian people. He's really tall compared to everybody. Look at how steep this camera angle is. Um. I like her sleeve. Is she wearing a robe again? Right, since they were having their dinner. The, the children have to have their dinner separate from everybody. They weren't that day huh? when they were talking to Horace. They were at the table. But they usually have to get segregated so that they don't bother everybody. You got to come down yet? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> T 
Toby. <laughs> okay, who's on the phone? Where did the little boy get a bell from? <laughs> Okay, Dad, damn. Huh, everybody's just like... Was he on leave? Or he had just gotten stationed to or both. He was on leave time. The music is very subtle uh, in this movie. I haven't noticed it until right there. It just very lightly came on, huh? Actress is the best. <laughs> he wants to be a plane. Yeah, that, please do not leave saying that, dude. Um, people, uh, I was not, 85% would have effed me up if I would have ever got that on a test. I was a straight A student. Huh? Yeah, it's really bright. She sleeps with a little ribbon in her hair. How cute. People, I'm glad we're watching this movie. It's good. Do we hear that he's gonna do his little engine, he said? 
He didn't really say that he was gonna do that. But she, she's listening for it. No, uh... Did the dad hear that when he said it? Okay, they're moving it along. It's gonna be this Dunkirk thing now. F was Dunkirk. Yeah, you gotta answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. I just looked up. Are you talking to me like that? Okay, so it was, yeah, it was in France, right? Fought around the French port of Dunkirk during the Second World War between the Allies and Nazi Germany. As the Allies were losing the Battle of France on the Western Front, the Battle of Dunkirk was the defense and evacuation of British and other Allied forces to Britain from May 26th to June 4th, 1940. That's what they're going to go do is get these people to evacuate them. They were, it was on the coast. So yeah, all of these just men, huh? but they've already been patrolling. Well, where were you having a party? He sounds like he's from Scotland. This is an intense scene. I love this scene. Let's, I just, don't let me talk through it. Don't let me talk through it. But I feel like they're going to announce, we'll hear kind of what they're going to be asked to do. Because they don't, they still don't know. They just know where they need to go to. So here they all are. These are just civilians. But they all have signed up to be patrolling around their little local area. They're just giving the perspective of what this was, right? I, before I just got that thing I was reading to you, they were saying 30, 40,000 people were left behind there. That's, okay, I feel like this battle was going on. They said it was between the Allies, Germany, they were losing, they evacuated, and they left a whole bunch of people like that behind. And so I feel like there's people there that these guys with their just boats that they personally own that are big enough, right, to have passengers and are mechanized. You know, they're not rowing their boats. Um, 
They're, yes, what, people, it's, there's a lot of them volunteering to come and do this, right? And they're in England. We just heard that was France. Britain has a pretty powerful navy, huh? Okay, okay. Well, I don't see how they don't have your attention. You know, you don't have their attention. people so yeah it only is for myself that one time just I watched a whole thing about World War one and two more about World War one but I remember the highlights of this Dunkirk thing and really I didn't get the significance of Dunkirk until I was looking up the Wikipedia article on this movie and it's like clearly this is a significant moment in this movie. We get the scale of what the F is going on here. But they don't get a chance to let anybody know what they are just volunteered to go do and it takes them days. So now both of her men are gone. So what time was that? 5.30? 6.30? It's daytime. No, it was farther than that. 7.30. So at the bar, when Ben came home, did you hear about the German pilot that crashed? She knows, though.
So they have waterfront property. I never noticed that. I guess that's how her husband just sailed to where he went to. Sorry, my leg is just itching. Ooh, ah. Uh. Except for her children. Okay, um, you can keep that. Okay, do damn. you never know is going on behind closed doors, right? Does he go? Okay.
Oh, really? This isn't totally, like, obviously. Oh, wow. Suspect. <laughs> If you saw some full buttoned up in a coat like that, wouldn't you want to call the police? <laughs> Is he trying to leave now? Emergency 911. Wow. She thought to say that. That's right. Queer Garson ain't playing no games. Be like, fool, I know you ain't coming up into my house. I'm the head of this house now. All my men are gone. My babies are here. Okay, don't, you don't need to try and help him. You called for the doctor. Look at him, he can get up. Well, that's why she's Mrs. Minor. Let me tell you the truth, I'd have kept that gun in my hand. And we'd just be waiting for the doctor. See? She slaps the shit out of him.
what what you standing there looking back at her for? Yes, thank you, Doctor. That's my favorite line of prison. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Her baby comes in. Look at this bow. The music is kind of sparse, again, I'm going to say, in this movie. They said this was a book just uh, two years earlier from 1940. <sighs> Thank you. 
Okay, we'll give it a go. He needs to brush his teeth. Yeah, man. That sounds good. I want cheese in my eggs. But damn. <laughs> she took it. Oh, she won't smoke this guy. I love it. <laughs> right, knock. <laughs> Clement. Clement. What's his name? Clement. Ah. Uh. Oh, she's going to take the head chair. Oh. Okay. Was it her life story? <laughs> ah. Oh. T 
12. Oh, she was 14. Oh, she googled her. I'm saying how she had a child. Well, yeah, she's been trying to say that. Okay, well then she is. Right, okay. He is. He's nice. <laughs> okay. All right. The music is sparse, so... So every night they have to come... Are they in their basement again? Or are they in a different place? No, uh, They're moving it along, huh? They're in this little bunker. Excuse me if you heard that. It wasn't anything. My throat just kind of <laughs> caught. <laughs> it wasn't a burp or anything. She's asleep. Wow. Yeah, they're just in a different reality now. He smokes in here? No. Huh. So at night time they come into here. He's gonna have a little smoke. Yeah, you ain't gonna fill up this little tiny ass space with this stinky pipe, right? Like he goes outside, okay. But they said even a cigarette shows so far away he smokes with his pipe down. This is a cool movie, people. Does she come out? My grandpa, sm I've told you guys, he smoked, he never smoked in the house. They attack the hospital. Is that what he meant? That the hospital gets bombed? That's not supposed to, right?
<laughs> she was trying to poke him. And we're going to suffocate. <laughs> This is why I made this channel this month. That's all I'm doing. From here on out, it's all I'm doing. I told you guys there's some movie where we had to talk about a cat. I got my cat when I was five. It was a kitten. My cat lived until I was 20. 15 years. My cat was really cool. It wasn't. When I was that little, my cat wasn't that big. It's gonna start to do damage to their house. Up. <sighs> She's showing us a little knee. She is beautiful. This is Miniver. My cat would not ever let me hold her tail. It's just because this is the best picture I've, that she gets the Oscar for it. I like her performance acting wise and just showing her prowess in Random Harvest a little bit better. We get a little bit more focus just on Greer Garson going through just a dramatic story, not... being, you know, an inspiration to the country, right? Like, that's why she wins for this. Not to say this isn't everything, but... I went an amazing feat, right, in one year to be, I gotta go back and forth on which is better and saying that she should have won an Oscar for a different movie.
We're just at the freaking flower show now, right? I mean, good. Oh my gosh. No, they're coming back from their honeymoon. Oh but I think it's the flower show too. Oh, does she talk? Got their house. <sighs> wow. Positive outlook. Oh. Her little piano lessons have been paying off. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> oh, he's at the mumps. Are they still contagious? gross. People do people still get the mumps? Is that something we get inoculated for as children? I never had the mumps. Um, I don't do we still see that one around? I'm noticing the music is too sparse in this movie yet. Yeah. She's freaking in um, the best years of our lives. The mu music in that movie is just as much a part of it as it. Okay, well, you say that one time, and then let's keep it moving from this mentality and speaking to it. What's the matter? Did you say something? Effed up to my mother about 
any minute now. You know, it's like, okay, Carol, I mean, there's things that we could just keep to ourselves too. I mean, I don't know that anybody going through this situation right now and then loved ones involved in it and shit don't know those dynamics with, you know, and you don't even need to speak to it. I mean, it's like, damn girl. Yes. His mother knew all of that without you needing to break it all that she kept and kept and kept on breaking it down. What's this dude? Why is he up on the stage? He didn't come to enough rehearsals. <laughs> okay. It was too early with that. <laughs> oh, his little rose is up there. White flowers are very fragrant. You notice that so much in Hawaii. I was on this little trail through the rainforest in Kauai one time and there was this, it was in December too, it doesn't really matter in Hawaii. There was this white flower I just smelled it before I saw it, and then it was white, and that's extra why it was so fragrant. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it was just a white or a red. Her rose was very beautiful, too, though. But I guess red roses, that's what... You want red roses, right? White is also for like, yeah. First prize, lady building, second prize. If she wanted to, she could. Oh, the vicar looked at her too. flowers, my goodness. Oh, she's some type of a lady. In their village. Those things are huge, whatever they are. What the F are those? Okay, those are the chrysanthemums. For the reds. It's pretty too. 
his is more circular. It's more perfect. Look at him, huh? he won't even be <laughs> able to move. How cute. <laughs> I'm saying, can he walk? Is he gonna still continue to overdo it? Like a full walk up there now, okay? <laughs> this is his life's achievement. They're my hobby, the roses are. Kiss him, he is not gonna go up there. <laughs> okay, well, if you need to say something about an attack, you need to say. That's dangerous, huh? As a, literally, we're gonna see, literally, we're gonna see those seconds that they kept their little daily lives thing going on. Where is she going? Why is this chick going? Carol doesn't really need to be leaving right now. I mean, look at how many people, the, the seconds that they lost matters. These people know they need to take this woman up on her offer to eat 300 cans of sardines.
That's why she came. I thought he was going in a separate car. Where is her husband? So there's an air raid and these two women are by themselves. But where did her husband go? He had to go patrol. Where are her kids? Yeah, yeah, so she can't have the lights on. So they had, they had a babysitter over. They can only go two miles an hour if you can't have any lights on to drive by in the forest. That is so cool, people. I never knew that we're looking at Best Actress both times. Oh my gosh.
Is that where the doubt just came from? I speechless for minutes, right? Good gosh. If we come to the church now, this is wrapping it up. I was gonna say we hadn't seen the old lady in a little bit because I was wondering if she was gonna have been at that house. Oh, wow. Okay, it's not very much.
was it possible, like, not to cry in this movie? I said I thought I was going to cry. I mean, do you not cry in this movie? Is Barrymore the priest in Goodbye Mr. Chips? He's out of nowhere. He's the vicar somewhere. It's like, when did he come into the movie? So he was not here. That's their um, anthem. Is this is this the best one on the channel? No. Love you guys. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next week again. Like I said, I'm done playing around. Damn it. This caliber. Oh my. <laughs> We're up in the ante. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.